Hello everyone, it's Stephanie. Thanks so much for joining me. I hope you're having a great day. Today I have a bunny wreath card that I wanted to share with you guys. And I'm going to be doing this for my Not Too Shabby Design Team project. So the first thing I'm going to do is use my Misty and stamp out several images. And I'm going to be using the stamp set Don't Worry Be Hoppy is one of the main stamp sets. And then I'll be adding some new and old stamp sets, and which is what I love to do most because I feel like that's the way I get the most bang for my buck out of all my supplies. So I'm going to stamp all of these out using some Gina K No Line Coloring Ink. I believe I'm using Warm Glow. I'm stamping these out on craft cardstock because I'm going to be coloring these with colored pencils. I'm going to start out with my Prisma colors, and these are what I've used the most and I have the most experience with, which still isn't a ton. And um, but the, I I showed my color chart because that's one thing I feel like I don't get use out of my products until I've swatched them, and sometimes honestly that's why I don't use them. So here I'm sharing one of the kind of a con of the Prisma colors. Some of them kind of look a little beat up, and some of them, if you'll notice at the end, they're not fully centered. And those are the pencils you'll want to be careful with because they can break when you're sharpening them. But I really haven't, I've seen a lot of people on forums and stuff gripe about that, and that's why Prisma Colors get a lot of hate. But I haven't had that issue very much with my pencils. Now, if you're lucky enough to have the pencils from Mexico, then hold on to those. Those are like gold, I think, because before they started making them in Mexico, I think they were, you know, made to a kind of a higher standard. But honestly, I still love my Prisma colors. They're easy for me to grab and play with because I don't feel like I'm wasting my expensive brand of pencils. And so I think sometimes they're easier for me to use uh, just because I feel like I don't have to be as careful and you just, one thing I do want to tell you is you want to make sure that they don't fall on the floor. That can cause the leads in the middle to break and then again cause breaking when you sharpen them. So all I do is I color, I start with a light, I start lightly and I think that's the thing I had to learn. Uh, I had a lot of problem with wax plume when I first started coloring with color pencils because I would just go in and uh, kind of go big or go home. I would take my time to start lightly and then also I, I think I would overdo it and then I would get wax bloom. So here I'm using this product that has been a game changer for me for coloring pencils and it is called Zest It. It is a solvent and it's meant for blending your colored pencils and it's so much better to me than Gansol because with Gansol I know it's supposed to be odor free but it wasn't odor free to me. Then I worried about, you know, having it in my house with my kids and pets and everything like that. I still try to keep the windows open with Zested. Using the Zested along with a little brush, I really enjoy that so much better than using Gamsol with this stuff. I also always have a large paintbrush that is just for wiping away the crumbs you get from the pencils. And that is one thing with Prisma Colors too. You do get a lot of little crumbs but it's easy to wipe them away and you do have to sharpen them a bit more but they're so affordable and they're so creamy and I find I get really good blends and I think maybe just because I've used them more I still feel like I'm better at coloring with them than, <laughs> than the fancy pencils myself. So I had a viewer request that I do kind of a face off between Prismacolor and my fancy Karen Dosh Illuminance colored pencils. So that's what I thought I would do today is share showing both pencils. I do have more experience with the Prisma colors, but I thought I would let you guys see how I use them both. But please remember you can use any colored pencils and use them just the same way. I truly think the more I the more I create and the more I play and the more I the more I learn. I think all you really need is the two free things you have in your craft room. They're not easy, but they are free, and that is patience and practicing. I really think that's what matters more than any than which brand you have. Now, some products might be more fun to use because they're not as frustrating, 
there's some products I've used that they really worked against me and I couldn't, I didn't have the patience to put in. But I think most products, even if they're not expensive, if you put the time in and practice, you can have a lot of fun. And as long as you enjoy it, you should just use whatever you have. So here I'm adding all the coloring. I always go in with a light coat first. And then I do, usually I do a bit of cross hatching. So I'll turn the paper and color the other direction. And that way it will kind of fill in all the grain. And the reason I love using any kind of either toned cardstock or craft cardstock is because it kind of already gives you your first layers. So I think it really pops on the paper. Um, sometimes if I want to use white paper, I find best results using a watercolor paper. And usually I use a hot press watercolor paper. Now when I color with color pencils, I tend to start with my lightest shade and then do a very light coat and then go use my medium and then add my dark shade at the last. And oftentimes I'll use three colors and group them together, kind of a light, medium, and dark. And then I'll add one really dark color, like I'll add a black or something as well. I don't know why, but that's what I tend to like to do. A lot of people think the Caran d'Ache Luminance pencils are the best color pencils in the world. And they are very nice. They are very splurge worthy. The reason they're so expensive is because they're so pigmented and they're, they're extremely light fast. And I don't think as card makers, most of you care or need that. Be, and if you're an artist, then you, you, know, you want to be able to sell your work. So you want everything to be, remain light fast and not fade away in the sunlight. But as a crafter, we're not, we don't really have to worry about that too much. You want your husband to get you a nice Mother's Day present, something like that, and you want to treat yourself. To me, they're almost like when I have a really nice pair of shoes, which is nice to wear sometimes. Most of the time, I'm going to wear flip-flops. And when you color with them, they, they feel not as quite as soft as Prisma colors. They're a little bit harder to me, but I feel like I get about four coats of Prisma colors from one use with the Luminance, if that makes sense. Just because they must have so much more pigment and not as much filler, not as much wax. So, but they are both a joy to use. It's so much easier for me to share myself using Arteza or, you know, a lower price product than it is to show me sharing the expensive because I feel like I don't want anyone to ever feel like, oh, they're not in the cool kids group because they can't expend the fancy, expensive, whatever, you know. You know, you're just trying to be able to afford Prisma colors. I've been there, so I don't want anyone to ever feel like that. So now I'm going to put some music on and let you continue to watch me color, and I'll catch up with you when I've completed all the coloring.
So I've completed coloring all these images and I tried to color them about the same colors. And you can tell with the Prisma colors, it's a little grainy still. Maybe it's user error. But you can see you can get really similar results. And I feel like I can get similar results with either pencil. Now I'm going to cut a circle into my panel and then I wanted to show you one more thing. The washi tape, when you run it through the die cutting machine, it takes off part of the coloring. So be careful with that. I had to go back and color one of my images again later because most of the color was removed. So I wanted to make a bunny wreath out of this. After cutting the circle out of my card panel, I started lining up the images and popping them up on foam squares the best I could. And a couple I had to go back and remove and try again. And then it made me so sad because I spent all that time coloring and then a lot of times I had to cut some of the stem away. And it was really hard but <laughs> because I spent so long shading and coloring and making it just right and a lot of it wasn't actually used. So I wasted a lot of my time, but luckily I really enjoy coloring. So I don't consider it really a wasted time. But I went along trying to pop all those up and get my wreath assembled and trying to add, uh, spread the colors around and make it look really cute. I loved how the bunny in the front had its arms hanging over the leaf. I put the little bunny tail on the back of the card so when you open it, it will show. And then the butterfly and the flower, I cut a little bit so I could pop them in there right. And then I wound up putting this mushroom on top of the other one because I just thought the color looked nicer. And then I will go ahead and put my sentiment on the inside and usually I would just put washi tape to hold it and glue it down but because I have a little bunny tail it doesn't work so I still use washi. I use washi for so many things in my craft room but I went up holding it and then using washi to hold it in place and folded it down and then I could place it right back up. And then I'll just remove the washi tape so, and then I had a couple places on the back when you open it, you could see the foam tape. So I used the extra butterflies and that's when I noticed that the washi tape had removed part of it. So I just colored it right in, easy peasy. And that completes the card today. So I hope you guys enjoyed this and I hope you got some good coloring tips. Hope you have a wonderful day. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.